Hey there friends, in previous videos I've often emphasized the importance of finding your niche, what you are known for in science, because that comes with so many benefits such as um, invitations to conferences, invitations to talks, invitations for collaboration, an easier time publishing things and so on and so forth. So the, the advantages of being known for something and having found your niche are, are incredible. And so how do you actually go about doing that? How do you find your niche? Well, first of all, and this is also the good news, there is not one path to doing that because you can find your niche in just a variety of different ways and different dimensions, if you will. Your niche can be concerning a question, it can be concerning a certain method. That method can be more a lab method or it can also be a statistical technique. It can be an experimental approach and it can be a study system, like an organism group or a particular ecosystem type, or any mixture of these, and probably many more. So the first conclusion in the question about how you find your niche in science is what really interests you. I mean, what are your inclinations? Are they more towards statistics? Are they more you're totally interested in a particular ecosystem type or a particular question? That is totally up to you. So let's break this down a little bit more. What is, of course, important are your own talent and abilities. So it's no use having an ambition to be known for a particular statistical technique, for example, just to pick this example, if you, you're not very good at math or statistics or it's just good enough to get by. So of course, this all depends on your your abilities and your talent. It should be something that you are well suited for, something that you're really good at. And this can really be anything. It can be math. It can be your special ability to translate questions into experimental designs. It can be about modeling. It can be about conceptual thinking. Anything really works. The second point, it should also be your passion. So not only should you be good at something, but you should really also enjoy doing this. This may not necessarily always be the same, even though I'm sure there's positive feedback loops between the two. And of course, developing this passion is important because it's be, it gotta be the driving force to push you forward. Now, these two points, what your talent and your abilities are, and also what you're passionate about, they are inside you, but they are also external factors to consider. Now, let's call that the demand, which often translates into availability of funding. Basically think of demand in terms of what the world needs. So generally it's a good idea to go for a big topic like biodiversity or global change or pollution or any of such issues where you know there are solutions really badly needed. And so therefore there is a lot of interest in this field. Of course, picking such a field that a lot of people are interested in and where there is a lot of demand for means it becomes even more important to carefully think about what your unique contribution is going to be because this is not going to be a lonely field. This is not going to be a place where there's only you and a few other people. This is going to be a busy field. It's going to be a field that's most likely very difficult to break into. So it becomes even more important that you find your unique angle within this larger field. But if you go for this big important field, whatever it is in your area, you have basically ensured the interest of people in what you have to offer. And if you then, what you have to offer, if that is a unique thing that not very many people will offer, like a, as I said, a statistical technique, a question approach, a conceptual contribution, then there will really be a lot of interest in what you have to offer. That is the big advantage because you might think, on the other hand, it would be much easier to carve out a niche in something that, you know, almost nobody is interested in. And this is, of course, fine and, and, and it is valid, but I think then you will have a hard time attracting the funding and attracting the interest in what you do. So therefore, I think it is very good advice to think about what is the big question that you want to make a contribution to. And sure, this can be specialized in your particular pet ecosystem and organism type or whatever it is, but you should always connect it to this big topic to ensure that there is demand and interest for what you do. 
basically where all this comes together, <laughs> where you are passionate about something, where you're really good at something, and where there is something that the world really needs and where therefore there's going to be funding to support your research, passion and abilities, this is the sweet spot where you will find your niche. So here you have all the ingredients. Figuring out the hot topic in your area of science is going to be relatively straightforward. I think you will get a feel for that already during your PhD. What does take time is what are your real passion and abilities. And of course, in order to find that out, you by necessity will have to expose yourself to a range of different things and also just try things out. And you should keep in mind, of course, that you might discover your passion not right at the very beginning. I think it's almost unreasonable to, uh, to expect that you have already figured this all out, like as you start your PhD, for example. You know, your passion may develop as you try things out and you will discover maybe some abilities that you didn't know you had. And so it's fine if this comes at the end of your PhD or if it even comes during a postdoc or even much later. And it might actually also change quite a bit during your career. What is important is that you recognize when you have reached that sweet spot and then act on it. Of course, it's much better to find it earlier rather than later for the benefits that are associated with having identified that niche. But if you found it, just be happy with it because this is actually one of the more difficult things to find. So I hope that video helped you with that process or made you think about it. And if that is the case, then I think it's achieved its goal. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.